always surprised if anybody knows who the hell I am. Oh, they know who you are. When you're playing to thousands of people, right. you got your base, and I've got my core yeah, base. Yeah, but you know what I find, though? Like, I find, like, they know who I am, and the, the second the show's over, all I need to do is, is get three blocks away from the, th from the theater, and nobody, nobody knows, knows who you are. Nobody knows who Same I am. thing. Yeah, <laughs> but I like that. No, I love it. I like that. I don't want to be that guy yeah. that, like, I can't go, you know, no, you see no. these people. My favorite celebrity thing ever is the bowling alley in your house. It's the funny, you probably have one. I right. feel like an asshole. No, I don't. Okay, good. <laughs> but, like, the bowling alley in the house, it's yeah. like, Jesus Christ, you can't go bowling? Right, it's like exactly. That. Like, what kind of a... <laughs> It's like with Elvis, when we used to sit and talk, I could never get him out to dinner. Okay, can I just digest what you just said? <laughs> it's like with Elvis when we used to sit and talk. Can you please talk to me what, look, about sitting and talking? What El year? What Elvis, year? Elvis, when I was at Caesars Palace, uh, when he started work in Vegas. The Intercontinental. 70s, no, the Hilton. The Hilton. But I knew him before because we were with RCA Victor Records. You know, there was us, this band of teenagers, and then there was Elvis, this amazing looking guy who had the it with a black voice. Mm -hmm. And we all looked at this guy, right? And there was nobody like Elvis from our milieu of people. I get to know him, and then I really get to know him in Vegas when he started working in Vegas, when the mm -hmm. colonel signed him up at the Hilton. And I would go over and hang with him. And it was a hang. You know, you'd walk in a room. All the windows had aluminum foil on it. Aluminum foil. Why? Didn't want any daylight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know where to put it. You just go with drapes. <laughs> <laughs> Not good enough. <laughs> Not eccentric enough. Yeah, aluminum foil. Where are you going to get a drape out of a drawer, right? right yeah. Get the aluminum foil. <laughs> so, and they love the guns. You know, he's shooting the gun shot up the TV set. But the point that I was going to make is... Wait, he we, shot a gun in the hotel? No, he, he didn't like Robert Goulet. And Robert Goulet came on television. He was a guy from Canada. For some, whatever the heart on he had for him. And he came on television... He shot the TV set. I said, thank God for my way. I'm going to get out of here alive, yeah. right? Because he was a my That's way That's that freak. Jordan thing. He probably <laughs> he probably took exception somehow to the Robert Goulet. Let me ask you, yeah. you said something interesting. You said he had, like, the black voice and everything. Yeah. Did you ever talk to him about how um, the perception that people had, like, like, you know, he was doing black music and he was getting the credit and the, the black artists weren't and all of that type of... Of stuff which was a thing because of the level of racism and all of that. Yeah. But then, like, now, like, 70 years later, it's almost like they look at him like he wasn't even talented, where it's like, you gotta be like, all right, you gotta dial that. Mm. This, like, there's a whole bunch of, like, when I look at Elvis, it's like, I understand all of that other stuff, but that, um, he was sort of the blueprint, I feel like, of the rock star, where, it, like, every cliche thing that a rock star can get involved in. Like, there was no information for him. Mm. Where the hangers on, people giving you drugs, like, like literally every single, you know, uh, music changing right. and somebody else coming in. And, like, and there was, like, nobody, I feel, like, he could really sit down and talk to. Like, when you hit, did you hit, like, he came, he, he hit in, what, 55 or 56? He was in 55, I hit in 56. And he hit about a year before I did. So when you were watching him, like, and then he goes into the army, mm. and then when he comes back, the Beatles are out. Right. Watching him navigating that yeah. and getting talked into doing the movies and stuff. And the Sinatra special and all that. Yeah. yeah, now were you and Bobby Darren sitting there going like, like, watching that going, okay, i do this or I wouldn't do that. Um, or, or were you guys too close in age we and were, stuff was moving too fast for you to contemplate that? No, we were focusing on the foundation we had and what we had to do. Elvis had his own vibe. We right. all knew that. We all knew the colonel, couldn't leave the country, great carny guy. He Did you know that back then, that he couldn't leave the country? Cause he was oh, so yeah, the word was out. You know, everybody knew everything. You have to oh, remember, okay. pop music back then was in its infancy stage. Mm -hmm. There's no Hendrix yet. There's no Beatles yet. Right. You know, I, I was somewhat responsible for the Beatles coming here because I was living over in England. I was living in France, and I would come home in a society that wasn't media-driven, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you know, people don't fathom the fact that it wasn't a media-driven society then. You knew nothing. You know, mm -hmm. today it's like, wow, instant. Nobody knew what was going on. Right. So the point was, I would come home from England I meet the uh, Beatles in Paris. They're working the Olympia Theater where I started as a kid. 
taking pictures, we're drinking, we're meeting. Hey, Paul, we want to publish and we want to write and all of this stuff. And I'm coming home telling Normie Weiss, a general artist, Sid Bernstein, who are my agents. I said, man, there's these kids, they got the hair and they're doing these covers and, and they're looking at me. I mean, what Beatles? What you know, hair? And I'm telling you, I love them. You know, I loved them as a musician. Mm -hmm. I said, you got to get over there and sign them. Nobody knew they were there. Fade out, fade in. Eventually, they go over in 64, and they bring the Beatles over, first shot on Ed Sullivan. But till then, nobody knew they existed. What were they like? Uh, what were they like when you were hanging out with them? Did, did you, I mean, there's no way you had any idea they were gonna be that big. They were different for me. I'd never seen anything like it. But when you spoke with them and you hung, they still had that quirky little edge. You know, they always tried to be like comedians. They'd always have something mm -hmm. off point to make a little humor out of it. They were very much that way, but still you could see they were trying to find their niche because right. it didn't happen. You know, in our business, till you put the mileage in, you know, we mm -hmm. know, we all right. have to sweat it out. You're not there yet. You know, it took Elton 2,000 miles. It took everybody some mileage to get to where they're at. Same with them. They were just a cover band. But yeah. when you saw them, you knew there was something going on. And then the vibe started in Great Britain. The point I was making is, till them, Elvis was criticized. My group, criticized. Mm -hmm. Anything indigenous to pop music, the fans loved us. Mm -hmm but the adults didn't like us. Most of us were whiteifying rock and roll. We were a clergyman's answer mm -hmm. because it was all the black experience that I loved and lived on. I could barely get them on the radio. Mm -hmm. And you know, I toured down south. I come out of Canada and I'm touring down south and I got all my black brothers who guys I idolized, Chuck Berry, uh, Lyman, Fats Domino. I'm on a bus all of a sudden going through the south where they're not allowed in to eat. What and was said, that like? And I said, fuck, I ain't going in without you guys. And I'm a kid. I'm starting to compute this. I said, I ain't going in. I'll go get the food and bring it. Well, we can't go to the bathroom. Well, let's go five miles an hour. You open the door and you're pissing out of, outside of the uh, bus. I'd never seen anything like it. Whites over here, blacks over here, cops, dogs. And I'm with my brothers, people that I idolized as a kid. Couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. Boy, what an awakening that was for me to see before the civil rights.